In last show, we visited the main exhibition area of the expo, and this program, we will follow our old friend, the one columnist of La Figaro, Sivan Aush, to see other activities in the expo, among which there is the most fascinating one, the tasting. So today we are at the expo again. Good morning. This is a special wine fair. This is a La Renaissance des Appellations, Return to the Terroir, and all the winemaker working with a biodynamic uh, philosophy. And you can see one of the best, I think, in the world. We can find from a uh, winemaker from Australia, New Zealand, France, Deutschland, from everywhere. And all they are very good wine, very natural. Every guest to the tasting can get a wine pamphlet like the one in Sivan's hand and a white glass. The pamphlet details the basic information about 104 present chateaus. Many guests will record the flavor and the features of the wine in detail for comparison and option. This return to Taiwan tasting of biodynamics was held by Paul Nicolas Julie. He is considered as the Pope of French biodynamics due to his strong calling for enforcement of ecological agriculture and abandonment of chemical use. In recent years, biodynamics is very popular among both new and old wine countries. Biodynamics is proposed by Austrian philosopher Rudolf Steiner in 1924. The philosophy emphasizes the use of nothing but natural fertilizer and an adherence to the habit of constellation with the purpose of revitalizing the chemical pesticide and fertilizer impelled soil. By respecting and following the nature, Pa Nicola Julie and his fellows make working in vineyards and winery very interesting. Ça c'est les restes des vendangeurs. Oui, c'est bon. This is dynamisation, it's a vortex. So, the natural substance we use in biodynamie, 3 200 grams by hectare, are put here and go through one hour of dynamisation, so their power is increased. And this is then sprayed either on the soil or on the leaves. So uh, it depends for what we make dynamization. Another thing we have, you see, is this. We use horns. Inside the horns, we put cow manure or silica. We leave it underneath the earth for six months, so it gets specific energies. And then we put this here and we go through a dynamization. So it's all based on natural products and through a synergy of these natural products and an organ of an animal, here it is a horn, it can be something else, we get through the synergy much more power and through the dynamization we gain again more power. So with tiny quantities, 3 gram to 100 gram by hectare, we have got big effect on the growth, on the quality of the energies which you have in the wine or in the plant, and on the health of the product. Biodynamics arouses a lot of disputes in the wine field. The supporters believe excellent grapes will be produced by the method. But objectors consider it ridiculous and sounds like binary astrology. As the biodynamics takes into consideration the effects of astronomical phenomena and the constellation on the plants, it makes the original and simple farming quite mysterious. In the next ball, the 104 biodynamics schedules give the visitors a better understanding of biodynamics with the excellent wines they made. It's excellent, very, very good. The wines are, are fantastic, are very concentrated, but with great acidity, very fresh, even with a, a very rich flavor. For me, it's a very nice Pinot Noir. 
it's a, it's a wine who have a very good uh, palate and a nice uh, nice flavors and the tasting is also very well because you, you have a very long after tasting for me it's a very nice wine delicious it's the best this is Australia in Bordeaux you can't beat that it's very refined very elegant but very deep very deep very um, you know very pure in flavors so just delicious the next ball has particularly set up a wine bookstore in the exhibition. People who want to know more about wine and spirits could read and buy books here. We happen to meet French writer Saglone Lufayf, who was busy on book signing. Her latest book is Women and Wine. These years, women are playing a more and more important role in winemaking. Female winemakers and female brewmasters are doing a very excellent job in this male-dominated field. Bien sûr, je suis euh, au départ historienne et j'ai travaillé sur les origines du vin dans l'Antiquité. Today, people say strange things about female winemakers, such as that women make different wines, which I do not believe at all. There are many old beliefs going back to Roman times about 2,000 years ago. There are still men who believe women should not work into a cellar during fermentation. In my research, I found some very funny things. For instance, until the end of 19th century, only men wrote about women and wine. So you have a very amusing look of men upon women even sometimes nasty, but most often funny. Everything became possible when women drink. In the 18th century, the great writer and seducer Casanova told how he used champagne to have women fall into his bed. Wine was considered as good for love and an aphrodisiac. In fact, wine is not good for love if you drink too much, but just a little amount might in fact help. Today, it was very interesting to talk with men about women and wine. In the field tasting held on the date of 23rd, winemakers from 13 different countries get together. They all are French, but make wines outside the country. This interesting tasting is just organized by Sivan Ausch of La Figaro. We are at Vinix Bowl and uh, an original tasting inside the Expo. And maybe one of the best, uh, I think, one, one fair, because uh, we can find all the French owners, they make wine outside from France. And today they will present their wine outside from France and also inside France. And we are with uh, Méliane de Langsain, who was uh, the owner of uh, Pichon Longueville, Comtesse de la Lande, one of the best uh, vineyards May Yelene de Longson has been the owner and a managing director of Chateau Pigeon Longville Comte de la Lande in Boyac for over 30 years. Far back as the 17th century, Pigeon Comtes was one of the top winery before the division of the estate. May inherited the shells and parts of the property in the 1978 division. She has been running Pigeon Counties for many years. Why did I go to South Africa? Yes, of course. In 1988, um, we went to South Africa with the Bordeaux delegation and we discovered beautiful terroirs, beautiful wines, and I went back many times as advisor and consultant. Where are you in South Africa? In fact, we are north of Cape Town and we are uh, in Stellenbosch on the Simonsberg mountain where there are the best terroir and a lovely microclimate. May built a contemporary cellar of 600 ton capacity in Stellenbosch and helped to improve the local winemaking techniques and to enhance the wine quality. The Glenelli created by May based on Cabinet Sauvignon is a best reflection of her international vision of the terroir in the new wine country. I would like to present you Dominique Menret. He makes wine in uh, the United States and also in Bordeaux. Could you explain to us uh, your wine? So, in Bordeaux I make two wines, uh, which are family vineyards, one Chateau de Bordeaux and the other one Domaine de Courteillac here. And, uh, 
in California. I am in partnership with the, all, the former owner of Domaine de Courteillac, uh, L'Aventure Estate. L'Aventure Estate is a, is a vineyard of 27 hectares located south of uh, San Francisco. In fact, uh, halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles. It's very close to from the Pacific Ocean, so we we have the profit of a very good weather, you know, very cool weather okay. during the night and very warm weather uh, during the day. So Is the, it good for the grapes? It's good for the grapes. It's good because uh, because of these uh, very cool nights, you know. Uh, so therefore, we can produce uh, wines at top maturity with a good balance of the tannins. These enterprising winemakers not only explore excellent terroir outside France, just like Chateau L'Aventure plant grapes on the thin soil of rich minerals in Paso Robles. They also help to improve the local terroir. Chateau L'Aventure has optimized the soil there by choosing rootstock and a battering irrigation system. What's the taste of this wine? What's the taste of this wine? I mean, how is it? Uh, the taste of this wine, I think, it's uh, full of uh, full of fruit, very warm, very very silky and well balanced, and uh, with a good potential of aging. Outside France, French winemakers run the vineyards with appropriate methods according to different terroirs. What's interesting, Michel Chapitier chose the biodynamics to cultivate the soil in both South Africa and Australia. Michel Chapitier is one of the highly respected winemakers in France. Michel succeeds in crusading for biodynamic wine growing, such as harvesting grape by hand and using only natural yeast to produce unfiltered wines, to ensure that soils are alive and are a true expression of the terroir. As a French vine grower, my uh, obsession is to extract the characteristic of the soil and for that I have chosen the organic farming which is I want a bacterial activity in the soil. I want the bacteria around the roots to be able to extract the characteristic of the soil. It's important to understand that a vegetal cannot extract the minerality. It is only the bacteria which are doing this. And for that we need to have organic farming, biodynamic farm. And the idea was, when I was moving to another region, to keep the same philosophy, to let the soil speak. That is the goal, to let the soil speak. If I go in Iscot, I am on Cambrian, the Sierra will have another expression than on the schist of, uh, of the Pyrenees in Australia. If we go to Beechworth, we will have a granny. So the same Shiraz or Syrah will have another expression because we have a live agriculture which permit the batteries to extract, to make the transmutation of the mineral in the vegetable. In Sivan Aoshi interview, these French winemakers in foreign countries have showed great interest to the China market and some have already been cooperating with China. Alors, I had a very interesting conversation uh, with uh, one journalist uh, because I think that uh, there is a parallel between tea and wine. Uh, between tea and wine? Yes, because tea has uh, appellations and so uh, the Chinese understand very well uh, the terroir concept because with tea we do have different terroir and also you have different smokiness with the tea which you could compare with uh, the barrel aging. We were actually in China in March this year and it was a very interesting market Where, in the mainland or in Hong Kong? We went to Shanghai, Guangzhou, Xiang Kang and Taiwan. Do you speak Chinese? Yi Tian Tell us uh, some, some words. This is our Nanhui Hongbu Dao Jiu. It's called An Wilka. This is the Nanhui Hongbu Dao Jiu. And this is a very good Hongbu Dao Jiu. Okay, thank you, Cecil. I work a lot with, with Hong Kong. Now with Torres, we work with in China. And in a very stable market. And you know, with the wine I do, the best marriage with my white wines is the century eggs, which is a typical traditional Chinese. Uh, I think in China they call that 
1,000 years age. And this is a typical uh, recipe from China, which is the best wine and food marriage that I have seen. The five-day Finexpo managed to dispel the worries towards the economic crisis. Buyers, sellers and experts got together, assessed the condition of the whole industry, and also expressed their confidence in the future. No other exhibition is more representative than this. Finexpo is definitely the leading exhibition in the wine industry.